Good morning. It is a delight to be with all of you. Many returning faces, some new names and new students we're excited to get to know, and even some alums have popped on. It's very good to be with you. As I prepare to preach and you prepare to hear my meditation on our scripture for today and see what speaks to you, I invite you to join me in prayer. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on this place. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Earlier this week, I was meeting with a new student on Zoom. As we chatted and got to know one another, she asked me, what led you to divinity school? What a delightful question, isn't it? It can be a hard question to answer because there are so many layers to it. Of course, I can give the elevator pitch response, something I can try to summarize in one to three sentences. But when I really answer a question like that, and maybe this feels true for you too, the answer feels less like a precise roadmap to grad school and more like an unveiling of my life. A great reveal of a tapestry of colliding colors, colliding experiences, mentors, interests, and aspirations, all being shared to help explain how I got to where I am and also who I am. For in the simple question of why did you choose to go to grad school, there isn't just a simple answer. There is who I was and also who I want to become. For new students, you are standing precisely at this intersection, standing between where you have come from, what has shaped you, what has inspired and encouraged you, and what you wanna leave behind, and also looking to where you want to be, what you hope to learn and become, what you hope to do. You've arrived at Yale, whether you're physically here in New Haven or whether you're in your home learning remotely this semester, but you've arrived full of anticipation and expectation. I want you to pause for a second and consider, why are you here? What led you here? Who helped you get here? What does your tapestry look like? And who are your constellation of peoples that helped shape you along your way to today? In the coming weeks, as you get to know new classmates, new communities, and maybe even this community, the University Church in Yale, a place that would love to become your faith home over the next many years, I hope you have the opportunity to answer and to ask this question. What led you here? What called you here? In Romans, Paul is speaking to a community that is in the midst of asking these questions, as Lisa beautifully read. They too are trying to understand where they have been and discern where they are called to be. In this place, Paul says to them, present yourselves as a living sacrifice and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. I'm gonna read that bit again. Be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you might discern what is the will of God and go do it. And don't go and do it, he seems to be saying, just for your own gain, but do it because we are connected to one another. For we are one body, the body of Christ, Paul writes. We are a body with many members, but not all with the same function. Some have gifts of prophecy, others gifts of ministry, others gift of, gifts of teaching and giving generously, and still others gifts of leadership, diligence, compassion, and cheerfulness. You cannot be all of these things, Paul seems to be saying. You can't on your own embody perfection though we sure are good at striving for that here at Yale. As you seek to discern the will of God, don't seek to do it all, Paul seems to be saying. For as Paul shows us, and as Christ continually modeled for us, we need one another. For we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. 
for to Paul and to Christ, even in our individuality, we're connected to one another. Professor George Forwell and Reverend Mary Alice Mulligan put it this way, Paul taught that faith takes one out of isolation and incorporates the individual into the body of Christ. As members of this body, Christians are responsible for the church and the world. Christians as members of the body of Christ are servants of humankind. As the gifts each person, person possesses serve to make the body of Christ functional. We need each other to survive, they wrote, although survivor is not the, survival is not the goal. The body exists to be in service to the world God loves. As you stand at this intersection, looking to the year ahead, what does being a member of the body of Christ look like for you? All of us gathered here this morning aren't new students, though many of us are. For all of us, though, there's always the invitation to begin again, to place ourselves at this intersection, considering where we have been and discerning where and who God is calling us to become. What is Christ calling you towards this year? And what do you need to remember along the way? If we look to Paul's writing, I think there are three brief morsels of wisdom that will guide and ground us as we each ask this question individually and communally. First, as flattering and daunting as it is, God needs each of us for the body of Christ and the work of the church to be complete. God needs each of us to be Christ's hands and feet in the world, to care for creation, to share our gifts of compassion and gentleness, to live into the calls God has planted deep down within us. God needs us. God needs you and me and each of us, as intimidating and beautiful as that is to realize for Christ's body to be at its best in the world. And in our living, God invites us to be living sacrifices, setting aside the temptations of the world, the temptations of perfection, the temptations of thinking of ourselves only in indiv indiv individualistic ways, the temptation to go it alone and participate in the work of Christ. This is what God needs of us. When we present ourselves to God, inviting God to shape our call, to guide our life and to advise and accompany, accompany us on our journeys, God desires to use us. How might your masters in engineering your study of computer science, your interest in public health, your new journey in being a grandparent, the invitation to be a new friend or leader, your recent retirement. How might these callings, these new journeys be included in God's tapestry? And beyond your degree program, your job, your role, what gifts has God planted within you that you are being invited to nurture and share during this time? Gifts of compassion, gifts of humor, gifts of generosity, gifts of connection, all gifts that particularly in this time with the twinning pandemics of COVID-19 and systemic racism and division plaguing our world. We could use these gifts, these simple profound gifts. It's mind boggling when you really think about it, but the way God designed creation, God decided that God would need us, not controlling us, but inviting us and being our companion and guide along the way in God's mission to tend to all of creation. So our first takeaway, God needs us. The second takeaway I think is that we need each other. We simply can't be the church or the body of Christ as God intends us to be without one another. In a culture when it's tempting to feel as if we're stronger when we go in on our own, Paul wants to, us to remember that it is not a mark of weakness, but it instead is a mark of faithfulness when we rely on one another and off offer a helping hand. In this time of COVID-19, we've all become keenly aware of what feeling isolated and alone can feel like. Paul reminds us that to live into our life of faith, we're called to show up for others and sometimes I think this is even harder than showing up for others. We're called to let them show up for us. 
to invite them into our own places of weakness. For as Reverend Mulligan put it, we need one another to help the body of Christ be truly functional in the world. So God needs us. We need each other. Final takeaway, we need God. Do not be conformed to this world, Paul wrote, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God. Do not be conformed, but transformed. Transformed by the wisdom of God, wisdom that, at least for me, it usually comes in bits and spurs, spurts when I least expect it. Transformed by whispers of the spirit in the quiet morning cup of coffee when we take time to be slow, a surprisingly difficult thing to do um, here at Yale, to just be slow. Transformed by the power of being within a Christian community, a community that can learn to love us well and that we too can learn to love back. And transformed by the witness of Christ, who didn't live according to the norms and mores and expectations of the first century Roman world, but instead who lived as if the future, just, peaceable kingdom of God was real and present and was here on earth. Friends, we have Christ to guide us, the spirit to encourage us, God to ground us, and you have this church to connect us. So to our new students, welcome to Yale. Yale may look different than it ever has before, but what remains when all of the glitter and the glam is stripped away is a community full of people that at our best are curious, compassionate, loving, and ready to get to know you and see how you can change us and make us better. Yale is no perfect place, of course, but I'm hopeful that in the year or years ahead of you, as you explore this place, you might feel as if you are more fully becoming who you are meant to be. That as time goes on, you might feel more and more drawn to the call God has planted within your heart, the call that led you here, and the call that will morph and grow and be transformed in the time ahead. And to our returning students and our many, many beloved older adults, welcome to this new academic year. To us, August is significantly more important than January. This is the mark of a new year. You made it. This is the turning of a new page. Let us approach this new year with a yearning for God to guide us, holding fast to the simple but profound reminders of Paul that God needs us, that we need each other, and that we need God. Amen.